Who is Keturah, the forgotten and mysterious wife of Abraham? The story of Abraham is the story of faith. In fact, Abraham has the exclusive title of the father of faith. As Paul writes in Galatians chapter 3 verse 6, Abraham, our father of faith, believed God, and the substance of his faith released God's righteousness to him. Yet the story of Abraham is also the story of prominence. His fame across time is assured by the promise of God to make him the father of a great nation, whose citizens will be as many as the stars in the sky. The name of Abraham will forever be ingrained in the tongue and psyche of the living. So is his wife Sarah. For the faithful, the reverence reserved for Sarah is not less to that of Abraham. Even Hagar, the surrogate mother of Abraham's illegitimate child, Ishmael, is often remembered in the story of the patriarch. No telling of the story of Abraham can be complete without the mention of his wife Sarah, as well as the maid, Hagar, who later bore him a son. But there is one important person in the story of Abraham that is often forgotten. Sometimes, it is as if she had not lived at all. As you shall see in this episode, God has a way of lifting the downtrodden and forgotten from the obscurity of time and history. We learn in Genesis 25 verse 1 that Abraham took another wife whose name was Keturah. Abraham had taken another wife whose name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jokshan was the father of Sheba and Dedan. The descendants of Dedan were the Asherites, the Ledishites, and the Leomites. The sons of Midian were Epha, Afer, Hanak, Abida, and Eldiah. All these were descendants of Keturah. Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac. Genesis 25 verse 1. This is about all we know of the mysterious Keturah. The Bible only offers a glimpse into the life of this woman who shared Abraham's later years. The precise status of Keturah in the house of Abraham is still a subject of debate. Was she truly his wife, or was she his concubine? The Book of Chronicles designates her as a concubine, referring to her offspring as the sons of Keturah, Abraham's concubine, 1 Chronicles 1 verse 32. In the context of biblical tradition, a concubine, while not accorded the same standing as a lawful wife, maintained an exclusive and ongoing relationship with a man, often bearing his children. Even though such children may be seen as inferior to the children of the legitimate wife, they are still entitled to their father's name and heritage. It seems that Keturah might have commenced her connection with Abraham as a concubine, but eventually became his wife, which could explain the dual characterization in the scriptures. Wife or concubine, what is clear is that Keturah never received the same recognition, reverence and eminence as Sarah, who held the esteemed position of the true matriarch within Abraham's lineage. The Bible does not bestow upon Keturah the same reverence afforded to Sarah. Apart from being the mother of Isaac, the celebrated forebear of the Jewish nation, Sarah is extolled for her loyalty to Abraham. Apostle Peter said as much when he proclaimed, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. 1 Peter 3 verse 6 Sarah stands as the embodiment of the biblical wife, characterized by faith and dedication to God's will. Such accolades are not attributed to Keturah, who despite her humble status as a secondary wife, played a vital role in God's grand design. Keturah bore Abraham six sons, and these sons would go on to be the ancestors of the Arab tribes established to the east of Israel. Keturah and his children shows a careful weaving of the lineage of these tribes into the lineage of the chosen nation of Israel. As the Bible reports, the lineage of the Midianites traces back to Keturah. The descendants of Midian, such as Epha, Afer, Hanuk, Abida, and Eldiah, are all linked to Keturah's lineage. Genesis 25. This Midianite connection bears significance for the history of Israel. Notably, when Moses fled Egypt, seeking refuge from Pharaoh's grasp, he found sanctuary in the land of Midian. At a well in Midian, he encountered the daughter of the Midianite priest, who would later become his wife, Exodus 2, verses 15 to 21. The descendants of Keturah, including the Midianites, intricately intertwine with the origin of the chosen people of Israel. This serves as a testament to the importance of the unassuming Keturah, whose life teaches us a valuable lesson. 
God's plan assigns each individual a specific role, regardless of how modest their circumstances or abilities may seem. Even those seemingly consigned to the sidelines of history contribute to the fulfillment of God's grand plan. For God, no one is insignificant or inconsequential. This notion is underscored by the words of the Apostle Paul, who writes that God often uses the so-called foolish, weak, and disregarded people of the world to confound the so-called wise and strong, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 27 to 28. Keturah's life in history reflects a broader truth. God's grand design frequently unfolds through the unassuming, the weak, and the unseen. Her role is a reminder that each of us is called to embrace our unique roles with humility and confidence in the greater plan of Jehovah. Nothing happens by mere chance. Every individual is cherished in God's eyes and is called to serve in the emergence of His kingdom of love. Indeed, there may be times when we, like Keturah, feel relegated to the background, overlooked, or underestimated. Yet our gaze should be unwaveringly fixed on Jesus Christ. Jesus humbled himself to serve all and to show us an immeasurable act of love. No effort is trivial when offered in unity with him. This is what Jesus meant when he said, And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. Matthew 10 verse 42. In the kingdom of Jesus Christ, even the smallest act of kindness takes on an enduring, eternal worth. For those of us in Christ, even the simplest and most unassuming existence blossoms into a source of productivity for the kingdom of God. Regardless of our limitations, let's humbly present ourselves to Him, offering what we are with sincere hearts. As we align ourselves to the calling of the Holy Spirit, we can determine God's intentions for us, even in difficult circumstances. While the world may see weakness, God sees the marvels that can be accomplished in and through us. As we journey forward, let us do so with assurance and delight, never allowing discouragement to obstruct our path to God's perfect kingdom. The Bible's account of Keturah's origin and identity remains mysterious to the point that it has become a source of debate among Bible scholars throughout history. The lingering questing has been, who is Keturah and where was she from? Some scholars believe she is the same as Hagar, the Egyptian mother of Ishmael. Remember that Sarah, for fear of not being able to give Abraham a son, encouraged him to have one with Hagar, who was her maid at the time. However, after Hagar had Ishmael, she became rude towards Sarah. When Sarah could not take it any longer, she asked Abraham to send her away. Abraham eventually sent Hagar and Ishmael away from his house. Keturah appears in the biblical narrative only after Sarah's death. Some suggest that Keturah is Hagar who returned back to Abraham after the death of Sarah. Here are some of the argument made for this possibility. 1. Hagar and Keturah are never mentioned together, and Hagar's subsequent fate remains unknown after she was dismissed at Sarah's behest. 2. The name Keturah means incense or perfume in Hebrew. Some scholars argue that after a period of trial, Hagar was reintegrated into Abraham's household under the name Keturah. However, other scholars disagree. First, nowhere else in the Bible does it exist that a character's identity will be so completely changed. Second, the children of Keturah as listed in the Bible is different from that of Hagar. So it seems that the debate whether Hagar and Keturah are the same is likely going to continue. Another mysterious aspect about Keturah the Bible remained silent about is her ancestry. Some believe that Keturah came from the region of Canaan, like Sarah, Abraham's first wife. Before his calling, Abram did indeed live among the Canaanites. It is possible that he found Keturah from that same people. Others believe that Keturah may have come from the Arabian Peninsula, home to some of her sons like the Midianites. Several church fathers like Augustine believe Keturah may have come from even more distant lands, like Ethiopia or southern Egypt. If that were the case, she would represent the universality of salvation in Jesus Christ extending to all humanity. Lastly, on the identity of this mysterious woman, because her name means incense or perfume, some suggest that this means she may have come from spice-producing regions like Arabia or Yemen. Some scholars in as early as the 4th century believe Keturah was as an Ethiopian, that is, a woman from Nubia, a region located south of ancient Egypt. This means that she was black, 
according to this hypothesis. Many contemporary Bible scholars have given weight to this notion. They associate Keturah with the Kushites, a Nubian people presented as black-skinned in the Bible. Like the other aspect of Keturah, her race is probably going to remain a mystery. In any case, the debate around a possible African origin for Keturah shows that she has always been associated with a universal divine election, going beyond the chosen people of Israel. This revelation is certainly an invitation to humility. It shows we can never fully understand the mystery of God. The Bible is only a gradual revealer of knowledge. We must progress patiently without forcing the texts into ready-made conceptual frameworks. What is essential is for us to accept the light of Jesus Christ offered to us with thanks. It is to offer gratitude to God for using the life and the mystery of Keturah to teach us the strength and power in unassuming humility. The more we learn of God's plan, the more the mystery grows, sending us back to our condition as creatures before our Creator. We must embrace this role, which reinforces the infinite greatness of God. Thank you for watching. We appreciate your time and support. Please do not forget to subscribe, share, and like this video. It will help us to keep making more videos like this. May we never forget the value of our lives in the grand design of God for the universe. Amen. God bless you.